improving a mathematical theorem. It is, and you know, sometimes when you solve a pu puzzle, you have kind of that, a little touch of that feeling. David Hilbert gave a list of problems that he felt would be important to be solved in the next century. What is Hilbert's tenth problem? Why couldn't there be a decision method, a Turing machine, a computer program, an algorithm, so you apply it to any Diophantine equation, it'll tell you whether or not it has a solution. So Hilbert's tenth problem is find such an algorithm. Hilbert was asking for a computer, but a, the idea of a computer was far in the future. Hilbert's tenth problem begs for an unsolvability proof. Since I read that sentence, I've been obsessed simply by that problem. First of all, it, it was, had this tantalizing idea of proving an impossibility. Secondly, it combined ideas from logic and ideas from the theory of numbers in a way that just made a heady mix. Uh, Julia Robinson, even more than, uh, than me, I would say, was particularly excited by that combination. In 1948, Julia Bowman Robinson, a 29-year-old Californian who had just earned her PhD, began working on the problem. For the next 22 years, Julia Robinson was captured by Hilbert's tenth problem. She was to make key contributions to its solution. One night, Julia explained Hilbert's tenth problem to me. And she said, you know, I just don't want to die without knowing the answer. I don't care who solves it. I have to know the answer. It was January 1970 that someone called Martin and told him that there was a very firm rumor that a young Russian had solved Hilbert's tenth problem. March 17, 1970. Dear Dr. Robinson, I wish to thank you for your kind letter of 22nd February. You have made an outstanding contribution to the solution of Hilbertson's problem, and in fact, to a great extent, it is your victory. They began to collaborate by letter before Julia actually met Yuri, which was the next year in, uh, at a meeting in Bucharest. I sometimes thought, uh, to put it a little poetically, that Julia saw him as the child she never had. I remember Julia calling me up and she said, Constance, what next? I've just been asked to stand for president-elect of the American Mathematical Society. I mean, her feeling was these honors just, it was a Cinderella story. These honors simply dropped upon her, you know, one after another, the National Academy, the MacArthur Award, the election to the um, American Mathematical Society, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, uh, the one of the 101 most outstanding women in, uh, I think it was the Good Housekeeping or the Ladies' Home Journal. It was just, Constance, what next? From my first year on, before I even knew I was going to work on Hilbert's 10th problem, I had Julia Robinson's biography in my, on my bookshelf. And, uh, so then in the first paper that I read by Matiasevich, so he described a little bit what uh, Julia Robinson's contribution was. There are so few women mathematicians who achieve the, the level that she did that I think it, it's special. And um, she didn't want to be remembered that way, but it's a way that she will be remembered. And maybe she didn't want to be a role model, but she is a role model. One of the strongest points of Julia was the originality of her thinking. She was able to contribute a number of important original ideas to give a new point of view to old subjects. She was able to spend her time on the subject of real interest to her.